Hello guys. So today in this video, we will be studying about the meninges of the spinal cord. Meninges are also called as the coverings of the spinal cord. The spinal meninges are similar to that of the cranial meninges. These are three in number. The dura mater, the arachnoid mater, and the pia mater. Now, the spinal cord consists of all the three same layers. The spinal cord as well as the brain consist of these three coverings equally. The only difference is that in some cases the dura mater may form folds whereas in other cases the dura mater may not result in the formation of folds. In order to master this concept or to study this concept in detail we first should know about the structure of the spinal cord which I have told you in the previous video. So here I am going to draw you a general structure of the spinal cord showing the meninges in it. Here I am making the half section of the spinal cord. If I will make this part it will be just like this. I am making this part only in order to make you all understand. Now it must be noted that firstly we should know about the pia meter. The innermost covering which is attached fully to that of the spinal cord is the pia meter. So here we can make the pia meter. The outermost covering this is the dura or you can say dura meter. This was the pia meter. Now in between these two layers there is a small covering or which can separate these two this is known as the arachnoid meter the space in between the dura meter and the arachnoid meter this is the subdural space space in between the arachnoid meter and the pia meter is called as the subarachnoid space The most important thing which is present in the subarachnoid space is the cerebrospinal fluid or the CSF. The CSF is required in diagnosis of various diseases related to the brain. So now firstly coming on to the dura meter. This covering continues from the foramen magnum a large hole in the suboccipital part of the human skull and reaches up to the S2 level of the vertebral column. Space between the dura mater and the vertebral column later on in the diagram I will explain it is called as the epidural space. This space mainly consists of areolar tissue
thing must not be confused space between dura and arachnoid is called as subdural whereas in between dura and vertebral column is epidural as i told you both the brain and the spinal cord consist of these three layers dura mater arachnoid mater and the pia mater let's have a look over the spinal dura and the cranial dura spinal dura is always single layered means outside the spinal cord there is pia mater then arachnoid then dura mater after dura mater there is no any layer but in case of cranium or you can say the brain the dura mater is divided into two parts or it may be double layered first one or the inner one is called as the meningeal layer outer to it is known as the endosteal layer it mainly do not form folds no folds or slash you can say extensions extension means this dura mater is only a layer it does not evolve or does not uh, make contact with other things in order to form a special structure but in case of brain the dura mater result in the formation of the structures just like uh, falx cerebri between two cerebral hemispheres falx cerebelli in the cerebellum tentorium cerebelli and diaphragma cellae part where pituitary gland is present so this was the information about the dura mater that what does the dura mater consist of now coming on to the next layer which is the arachnoid mater this is the middle layer it is avascular means no blood supply dura and pia have a little bit amount of a blood supply but arachnoid mater is totally avascular that is no blood supply is present space between the arachnoid mater and the pia mater arachnoid and pia is called subarachnoid space where csf is present the last layer or the innermost layer is the pia mater as i have told you in the diagram pia mater it is a innermost covering attached very tightly attached just if you try to pull it out it is difficult to pull the pia mater along with the spinal cord most of you have heard about a technique known as the lumbar puncture so what is lumbar puncture pia mater which is the innermost layer of the spinal cord if we see just in a diagram like that so these are the vertebra don't have a look over the diagram just it's only for understanding 
this is the part where the L1 level the spinal cord gets terminated this is conus medullaris after this part suppose this is the pia meter the pia meter undergoes its extension into a long thread like structure called as the phylum terminale later on when we will study in detail about the extensions of pia meter we will study that phylum terminale is of two types phylum phylum terminale internum and phylum terminale externum this portion where the spinal cord ends this portion is the CSF cistern so if a doctor has to take out the cerebrospinal fluid from a patient he will target this portion the elbow portion starting from where first of all the doctor will recognize the iliac spine most of the books prefer that near to the iliac spine there is vertebra number S2 so he will palpate iliac spine reaches to S2 and then he will count vertebras upward and reach to the L1 level and from here he will extract the cerebrospinal fluid which can be used for the diagnosis of various diseases so how the doctor will reach this whole process or how the doctor will reach up to this portion means doctor will prick the syringe into this portion so which parts or skin subcutaneous tissue what the syringe will pierce in order to reach the subarachnoid space so doing the lumbar puncture first is the skin then the subcutaneous tissue the supraspinous ligament infraspinous ligament the posterior epidural space epidural space which is present between dura mater and the vertebral column then the dura mater and then the subarachnoid space so this series must be remembered in order because in most of the exams or competitive exams the question may come a doctor is performing a CSF puncture or a lumbar puncture just after piercing into the subcutaneous tissue which will be the next structure the doctor will pierce the four options will be this and you will get confused in this so guys this was the little bit information or you can say that the detailed information about the meninges of the spinal cord so let me show you how is the epidural space so suppose this is your spinal cord this is the pia meter this is arachnoid meter this is dura meter pia meter arachnoid meter is subarachnoid space subdural space this is the vertebral column so dura meter and the vertebral column this portion is the epidural space which contains the loose areolar tissue or you can say the areolar tissue as well don't get confused in this portion it this is only just for understanding that what are these layers later on from here the spinal nerves will arise this will be just like the posterior or this will be the anterior posterior um, root or the anterior root so this was the final description about meninges of the spinal cord thank you so much hope you have enjoyed the video